Alright, we have done the function hyperbola. We have sketched it. We've got all the asymptotes. We did all the um, details of the domain and the range, the restrictions, etc. Now, I just need to say, find the equation of the inverse. So to find the equation of anything, what's the first one going to be? Swapping the x and the y around. And then it makes them symmetrical about the line what? What is the line of symmetry? Yes, fantastic. It's y equal to x. Just for interest sake. But it's got nothing to do with this now at the moment. I just have to find the equation. Will I leave the equation like this? No. Never. I'll always take it back to y equals. So there's the y I'm looking for. So what are we going to do first? Take the 2 across. It becomes x minus 2. Then what will we do? You think? Cross multiplication, basically swapping. It is cross multiplication, but basically we're swapping. Agreed? Because all of the techniques that you've already learned. You can go do LCD, etc, etc, but you're coming down to this one maybe two steps later. And then it's, the only thing that you still have to do is to say, take the one over and it becomes a plus one. Now if you look at the asymptotes here, the asymptotes will be x equal to? Two, 2 and y equal to? Uh, now it's not on the board, but tell me the original one. The asymptotes were? x equals to 1 and then y. x equal to 1? Y, y is equal to 2 because everything swapped up. Yeah. Have you got it? Yeah. So the inverse of a hyperbola is still a hyperbola. It's not on the same space, but it's still a hyperbola. If it was a positive hyperbola, meaning quadrant 1 and 3, the inverse is still going to be quadrant 1 and 3. That's not going to change into a negative. So it's still going to be 1 and 3. Getting into the last one of the four, we did straight line, we did parabola, we did hyperbola. Now we're on the exponential graph. All of this is revision. First of all, hopefully you knew that this wasn't a parabola, but exponential graph. And I'm saying, first of all, you've got it up. Sketch it for me. How would I sketch it? Where do I stop? The asymptote. The asymptote being? X is equal to negative 2. What? Y is equal to negative 2. That's the asymptote. Now let's think about a few things that you should know. If I know, because I can start off with this graph already by just putting the y equals to negative 2. And I have a mark in an exam. Okay? Now I must just figure out whether it's going to be an ascending graph or a descending graph and why is it above the asymptote? Because some of them sometimes are below either ascending or descending. So it can be any one of the choices. First of all, why am I choosing above? Is it because of the 2? Okay, remember it was b times a to the x minus b plus q, in which the b can be negative. But if this was negative here in front, was it wrong? Hmm. But then it meant that the B part was negative. The A part can never ever be negative. It has to be positive, otherwise it's not exponential. Otherwise, every time that A is to a negative of it, an uneven exponent, and it was negative, every time that that is even, this would be plus. Odd, this would be negative. So it's going to jump all over the show. It's not an exponential graph. So the restriction to be a exponential graph is that A is going to be positive. So first of all, that B part tells me that it's above. A can never be negative. Mm -hmm. And then the P and Q part is all about the movements to the 
Left and right for x minus p, and q is for up and down the transformations. All right, so now my problem is I don't know whether it's going to ascend or it's going to descend. Now, guys, you can go study that off by heart, and I told you that last year as well, but you don't have to because you could figure it out. I'm not quite sure if it's going to go upwards or downwards, if it's going to go this side, whatever. But if I need, I need to go work out what? The? Intercepts. Intercepts with the axis. Because if those are the two intercepts, then I know it's going to be descending. Mm -hmm. If those are the intercepts, I know it's going to be ascending. And it could even be there, ascending. Are you with me? That's the reason why I say you don't really have to study that off by heart. If you do, you knew that if this... The a, the a part is bigger than zero. Oh, no, no. Bigger, than, bigger than zero, obviously, but it's got to be a bigger than one. Then it's going to be ascending. But if it's at the bottom, the thing swaps around. It's too much information to go and study off by heart. I told you. You need to go sketch this thing. Even if you just get an x intercept or a y intercept, then I'm not sure. Just get another point. If you work at another point, choosing for x, whatever, and it looks like this, you know it's dc. Just get another point. Are you with me, everybody? We don't want to confuse ourselves. There's always something you can go and do later on. So we need, obviously, to find the x and y intercept. So for the y intercept, we put x equal to 0, so we got y equal 2. 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, minus 2 is? Two. So the y-intercept is two. Happy? We need the x-intercept. And for that we put y equal to zero. Zero equal to two to the x plus two minus two. What type of an equation is that? Exponential. Exponential in which we have to get? The base is the same. It's going to change today. From today, well, or tomorrow, when you need something like this, you'll be able to handle it using locks. We're getting into the locks immediately. Right, so when we get to something like this, we were used to getting the bases the same, dropping those bases with a logical deduction and saying, one, one is equal to x plus two, and x is equal to? Negative, negative one. And the moment I see the negative one, I know what the shape is. It's got to go ascending, increasing. So, happy on that one for G. Okay, let's do a little bit more revision and tell me what is the domain of G? Mm. Um, All the real numbers. Because the x's go from minus infinity to positive infinity. The y values, the range of g. Y and Can be anything? You can't say all the real numbers because it can't be here. With all the real numbers? Bigger than negative 2. If you say all the real numbers except for minus 2, you're thinking about the hyperbola. All the real numbers, uh-uh, from these. It has to be the real numbers bigger than. And actually, we can write y as an element of r, but it must be bigger than negative 2. Not including because that's an asymptote. Maximum and minimum. Make sense for this one? Uh, axis of symmetry for the exponential graph. There's none. Axis of symmetry in the hyperbola. Yes. How many? Yes. Two. Parabola axis of symmetry yes. is one through the yes. turning yes. point, yes. and it's x equal to whatever the x value of the yes. turning yes. point is. Those things never change. All right. Um, what else? Let's move this thing. Let's say let's transform it. Uh, K is when G is moved. Four units right. Find K. We just made up our own sum. Find K for me. K is a movement of G. So K is a new expression. But if I move it four units 
to the right, what must happen to this wall? So that will be y equal to? 2x minus 4. Minus 4. Minus 4. That's it with the girls and the boys. Moving left and right. You don't have to show you this step. You can immediately just write x minus 2. Are you with me? Showing me that it's moved four units to the right. If it was up and down, fine. Up is plus, down is minus, no problem. But this is the goals. Mm -hmm. So we're saying minus two. two. And done. And just to be nice, we write kx is equal to. So this graph has just moved to the left top. Right. Up and down, the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Now let's get right into our first log sketch. Because I'm telling you now that the inverse function of exponential is a a logarithm. But you just say logs. Okay, now you don't know what you're doing, but please sketch it. Help me. Why? Obviously, this was a minus, right? Y must be at negative 1, here's negative 2, right? And then X must be 2. X must be at 2. And then X again must be negative 2. Excellent. The asymptote will change from a horizontal asymptote to a vertical asymptote. And the equation is? X must be equal to? Negative 2. Now can you sketch it? How? Okay. Remember that this is an asymptote. So it's this, wherever it comes from, must go closer, closer to the asymptote and not cut. Show me. Yes, coming not like this. If you do this, it's going to go smack inside of it. It's got to go this way, coming closer but never touching. Are you with me? Can you see it? If you do this, it's going to be absolutely wrong. Because you're going smack right into the asymptote. This is the correct way of doing it. Coming closer, closer to the asymptote but never touching. And this is called the inverse of, you just sketched a log graph. If you know this, the, the exponential graph, you just swap everything up round. Are you happy on that? Please tell me with that log graph, what is the domain of the log graph and what is the range of the log graph? Domain? X must be greater than negative 2. And? Y is greater than negative 2. But you have the sketch, right? Yes. So let's not look there, let's look there. What are the X's used in this red graph? Everything up to negative 2 and bigger, and not including. Are you with me? The y's go from negative infinity to, it's a little bit flat, so it's getting, taking its sweet time in getting to positive infinity, but it's getting there. Are you with me? All right. So also for, and last thing. These two graphs are symmetrical about the line. Do you see it? By the way, this is negative 2 and negative 2. So my x equal to y, or y equal to x, should go right through where they intersect each other. Do you see it being symmetrical? Because now remember, if it was this shape, it would have been a shape that would intersect like we have seen with exponential graphs and stuff as well. You, but you're seeing this one very, very clearly and very nicely. Alright, last thing I want to show you is the equation of the inverse. So, let us find the equation of the inverse, which I told you is a... Log. Now guys, I'm going to do it now and then I'm going to get into the definition of logs. For now, all that you would get a mark for is doing what? Swapping the x and the y round. And then you would be absolutely stuck, which is absolutely right because I haven't taught you this. We're going to be doing it just now in the next um, exercise. I'm, I'm going to say you have to find the... What do you mean by this to do in the next step? Find y, right? That's my mission. So what would you think is first on your agenda? Take the negative 2 to this side. 
And now the next step I'm just going to write down because you will not know how to do it. You are going to change this from exponent form into log form. And this is the answer without any explanation because it makes absolutely no sense at all to you at this moment. But the next time I see you, I'm going to explain the log norms to you. So there's something fishy happening here and you're thinking, what? And you'll be knowing what in a minute or two. All right? And then the last thing, you still don't have Y low. How do you get it low? Okay, and then also the fact that I put that in a bracket because it's this whole thing that must be logged. And then this will also be negative two. Oopsie, I missed. Oopsie, I missed something. Thank you. This negative two should be a plus over here. And then will be a plus over here and a plus over there. And then this would be negative two. Can I now add them together and say no? That's why I put them in a bracket. Because this log law, you, when you understand it tomorrow, you'll be able to see where it comes from. So, last question. Is it a function? The inverse? Yes. And what would be your reason? Because For every x, there's only one y. If it wasn't a function, what would your reason be? For every x, if I hear for more, then I'm going to slap for every x there is not only one. Guys, please don't get that wrong. It's definitely there, definitely a mark. So this would be a function because you're right. For every x there's only one y value. So you have just done your first log, but you don't know what's going on here, but you'll know pretty soon. Are you with me? Okay. Thank you.